Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the plant room needs a major overhaul. If you've seen a couple of my recent shows in the fall here of 2022, you'll notice that I've worked on the plant room once or twice. Um, everything seems to be pretty good, but there is a major, major issue. So we just had someone come to our house to give us a um, sample of our air quality. So family members uh, that live in my house have been having some issues that we wonder if mold is the culprit. Now, if mold is the culprit, I could be the major, major culprit because I'm creating likely some, if not most of that mold. Yeah, so the humidity in my room has been causing some mold to form in this room and likely throughout the house. So in a nutshell, without getting too much information, we had some air quality uh, samples taken of the house. And this was the second worst room in the house. But I've had fish tanks in here. I've had my plants in here. And of course, with higher humidity, you're gonna get mold on the more porous um, material in the room. So if I have any wooden stands, any wooden structures, shelving, bookcases that are wooden, that are porous, not shellacked really well, with a nice coat of uh, maybe real um, um, paint on there that's glossy, uh, to make that mold not stick to it, you can wash it off real quick. Yeah, there's some mold. So. The corrections to fix our house are run the gamut from, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks fixes to thousands of dollars. So we have some changes to make. So right away with the plant room, we knew we had to make some changes. So I already removed one of my wooden shelves. It had nothing to do with bonsai plants. So that's gone. We're going to sand that all up down and clean it up of the mold and try to maybe spray paint some new paint on there and see if it's going to be good for an outside garage type shelf from this point forward. But in the plant room, I've got the two um, shelves in my closet area that are made of wood. One, not stained, finished, shellacked at all. So mold can get on there and stick there uh, pretty, pretty heavily. So that'll have to change at some point. The other one has a stain on it, a little less porous, but that eventually have to go too. The other closet in this bedroom, because there's a double closet in this room, lots of closet space, I already went out and I got a couple of new shelves. I got two of those uh, metal chrome type uh, bookshelves that will be more uh, tolerant to any uh, uh, humidity and moisture in this room. So I quickly put two of those together and put them into the uh, second closet and I'll show you that in a moment. And so then I have to slowly but surely make sure this room gets more and more mold free or mold resistant if you will. The two glass tables that I've recently repurposed with the metal uh, legs and the glass top are really, really good for the room. So I got rid of one of my taller workbenches. So now I have the two glass ones, the one I'm sitting at now and the one over by the window. Now I've got two metal shelves. Let's take a peek at those. It's the slow process to getting this plant room where it should be. So the plants can be taken care of, have some decent humidity in here, but not affect the rest of the house and the health because the health of my family is more important than the trees. And we might even have to work on other ways to store my trees. So we got a lot of work to do to see if we can make this work. Let's take a quick peek at the closet to see what I just did after we finished the completion of these two shelves. Here we are in closet number two. Now my son left all his drawings from when he used to have this as his game room. He used to hide in here with this big TV screen over here and he'd play some games and uh, kind of cuddle in here into this closet. Well, I've left all his drawings just so I can keep thinking of my son. It's been kind of fun. Uh, his rules down back there. Rule number one, be epic. Rule number two, repeat rule number one. Now, what I have to do before I make this permanent is I have to put some kills on the bottom of this cement here so no mold and, and moisture gets into this cement because we got rid of the carpeting already. That's gone. That was the last chunk of carpeting in, here, in this room. Carpet's gone. We'll put some kills on the floor and put these back in there, but I wanted to see how they fit. So we got two of these side by side. These are the uh, five foot shelves. Uh, you can get with four shelves on there. Got a skinny one in the bottom for some supplies, and I've got two taller ones for the trees to fit in here. And I have a second one of these LED lights that uh, my friend Steve got me from a construction zone that no longer wanted these lights. LED lights, the other one's over by my glass table by the window. So we'll have, we'll have this thing either sitting right on there, or we'll just raise it right here and tie it to our little uh, clothes hanger rack right there, and we'll get some light down on these plants. 
So I've got the new ficus that I ordered, and I've got the um, tiger bark ficus down there, and some other uh, trees, um, um, some cuttings and stuff. So that's going to work really, really well. I'll be able to fill these two shelves really nice with trees, and it frees up some more space in my room. This will work. So we need to kills, hang some lights, and we'll be good to go inside the closet. Closet number two now of the plant room. And these doors, if I want to keep some moisture out of this area, I can just close the uh, mirror doors. But let's leave a moment. So I've hunkered down here by Jeannie's hibiscus, and behind uh, the hibiscus is another wooden shelf that I'm going to have to get rid of if it's going to sit there and get mold. It's kind of porous. It was stained years ago, but either I paint it all black like my other furniture and get a nice uh, poreless surface, or I just replace it with another metal shelf or something. So this will come out uh, this weekend as well. And then the hibiscus might go sit in that corner actually. So let's update the hibiscus since we're right here. So since we put it in the plant room, things just really perked up. It started to come to life and look at all the big leaves, the uh, lower branch down here. It's a little spindly at the bottom because the cat keeps coming at these uh, branches right here. And the cat really likes to chew on the hibiscus. And so, um, I catch, a, catch, her in the, catch him in the act all the time and kick him out of here. But there's all kinds of leaves down here and it's gotten some length up here. We've got all these uh, new buds going on and look right here. Lo and behold, this is going to be a flower here in the next couple of weeks. But we've got growth inside which is super nice. Look right here. This is a bud right here growing new leaf. There's this uh, one back here that's alive on that branch and this is doing really well. So we've got branches. Uh, and new buds deep inside, so it's back budding really well. So we're just going to let this thing completely flush out some more, and then later on this winter, uh, when I see it really thicken up, I'm going to go ahead and cut it back even further. But there's an update for you here while we're looking at uh, parts of the uh, plant room that have to be updated. This is an update on the hibiscus. Hey everyone, I'm in the midst of a tiger bark forest. So there's nothing I can do in the plant room tonight anymore. So I want to make a decision on which tiger bark I'm going to work on. So I have some of these uh, left over from this summer and they'll be used for workshops in the future. But I knew I was going to pick one of these for my own tree and I had to look through them all. So I'm going to do that process right now and I'm going to give you a little glimpse into some of what I'm looking at and what I'm thinking about with these trees. So let me get my turntable and we'll put some of these and give it a spin and we'll see if we can find the tiger bark that's going to become my very own. I have nine to choose from, um, so this is not going to be an easy uh, thing to do, I don't think. Um, but I've got some leaves that have fallen off and died off into the uh, soil here. Um, the, the transition into the plant room has been pretty good, but I am getting some, some dieback of the leaves or some falling off, which uh, happens a lot with ficus trees uh, and this tiger bark uh, not uh, being no uh, exception to that rule. So. I'm going to go ahead and when I see some of these branches that look like they're already gone, I might just shoot them right off right away. But um, I'm going to see the bark on these. I'm going to see the, the angle. I'm going to look at the nabari. You can see most of these have been chopped. This one was chopped right in there, right where my finger is. There's a big chop right there. And here my finger is. There's a dead branch. So that has... A little bit of subtle movement. Got a little bit of a knot here. A lot of these do have some of these knots from the old branches. And they're all very topiary, um, almost uh, hedge pruned. Um, and so you can start to bring them out and peel them out. Um, so this one looks pretty standard, straightforward. This one has some fun uh, uh, movement to it. The chop is back here, but it's already hidden pretty well. Got a really nice aerial root here, and this aerial root here is not so bad itself. So a couple of aerial roots, this one broke off, so that one just have to come off here in a little bit. Um, that one's kind of a fun one. Uh, I'm liking that one better than the first one, so I'll put that one over here. And then look at this one, a couple aerial roots down on that side. Again, the chop is right in here, and it's hard to see with all these new branches, but there's a little bit of a um, reverse taper in the top of this one that just isn't uh, turning me on at the moment. We go to this one right here, another nice aerial root here. This is where the chop was, and the aerial root grow that grew there uh, from this side. If we angle the tree the right way, it could work out pretty neat. Um, I like the width of the trunk down here, but it's real skinny this way. So that one is um, interesting trunk though. I just There's something about that one. I'm just going to save it for a moment. This one's really thick on the bottom. 
And we got some weeds here. Again, lots and lots of uh, leaves from the ficus since it's coming inside. Hmm. This one's a little bit shorter. Big shop up here, a lot of growth. Look at this new one right here that's taken off as the main branch right now. This one could thicken up and be a branch. We could bring some of these down with some wiring. This definitely would need some wiring. They all will need some wiring. Wide from here to here. Super wide. I'm going to hold off on that one. This one's got some nice movement on this one. And what I like about this one is the Nabari down here. If you can see the Nabari, it gets a little wide down here. A little bit wider down here. Then it gets thin right here, and then it might have a little bit of a reverse taper feel to it. But if you turn the tree around the right angle, you might get rid of some of that reverse taper. It's a little more straight up and down, though. But I like that, too. That's one of my three so far that I think I might choose. This one's a big, thick, wide one at the bottom here. It's got a big old uh, branch cut right here and here, and so if we could maybe make that branch cut a little bit less wide, you could turn it this way. We've got the big chop right here, so it's a big, big chop with this new part of the tree growing, so if we could put this thing at an angle at some point, that's kind of an interesting trunk. This one's fun too, really wide down here. Really wide at the bottom. This has a really nice nabari. So if you can see down there, the width from here to here, it's really nice and wide. It's wide from that direction and this direction. We've got some dead branches up here. This one's probably no longer alive, but uh, we've got three branches up top here, which I really like. So that is one of my favorites. This one has a really blatant chop on it still. We have, we'd have to clean up that chop a lot and get this as the primary branch over here now. Um, but you can look at this one a little bit. As I clean out some of the leaves. There's some fun little movement to it already. Subtle, with all the bumps and stuff on there. So we've narrowed it down to two, I think. And this one has that really fun wide Nabari. This one has a pretty good wide Nabari too. It's got this, uh, this uh, aerial root right there, if that's the front of the tree, possibly. Let's give them one more spin each here. There's something about this one. I'm not even sure entirely what it is, but I think I've made my mind up. This one's gonna be the one that I'm gonna work on next. We're gonna put this thing into a pot and we are going to uh, trim out all the bad stuff and uh, see what we can do with this tiger bark ficus. Time now to start work on the tiger bark ficus. So I'm super excited because I've waited for well, almost six months to do this. Wait a minute, when did I get these? I got these in April or May. I got these in May, June, July, August, September, July. Four months I've been waiting to work on this tree, uh, pick one of them out and work on them. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this, uh, this uh, tiger bark. So these are some workshop trees. Um, I made sure that I purchased a couple on my own, so I would have some to work on. And here we go. So that was an old chunk right there, and making that scar a little bit less bulky to we, so we don't have some reverse taper. So that'll heal hopefully over time. And this is a, a nice, a nice uh, tropical tree because of the, the texture of the tiger bark. Um, when it's wet, you can kind of almost see those striations, those little lines, almost like the tiger, right? Um, and then uh, it's thick and more, um, more like uh, uh, some of our deciduous trees that we have and um, gets a real rough bark. And so some of the scars will heal and not look as, as uh, I guess, bad. Um, sometimes scars on ficuses take forever to go away if they ever go away. Um, many, of them, many of them do not. So I'm going to go around first and cut off you know, some of the stuff that I just know is not doing so well. Um, we're going to cut back the dead stuff is what I'm talking about here. There are some dead branches in here and mainly because they've been shaded out uh, partially in the summer from where I kept them and stored them. Um, now they're inside and they're getting some good light good temperatures. They're going to just rest in here for a while. 
And so while they're resting, I thought I would take my first foray into the tiger bark. So we're going to do a lot of cleanup today. I don't know that I'm going to repot this in this episode or if I'll do that in the next one. We'll see how far I get. And there we go. That's another big chunk right there. Here we go. So very much like my melon seed ficuses, these tiger bark ficuses uh, tend to uh, bud back pretty darn good. Um, and they do come a lot from the nurseries in these hedge prunes. They kind of look like a, a broom style for sure. And uh, depending on how much sun they're getting, what kind of growing conditions they have, you know, they're just going to keep growing up to the sun. And so it doesn't really lend well for our movement of our typical tree. And there's a big chop right here and then a little bit of a growth knot right there. We're going to see what we're going to do with that. So I'm just going through and trying to make sure that I'm going to get rid of stuff I know I don't know. Some inside branches in here. We've got some nubs here and some death. Some dieback pieces. And some of these will clean up. But regardless of what I end up doing with this one today, this cleanup is going to allow for more light to get into this tree. And uh, hopefully get some more back budding because we're cutting some of the branches away. And uh, we can be off with uh, possible designs in the future here. So now that I've cleaned up some of that side already, got the nice aerial root here. And look at the movement of this branch. So we've got this little slight kind of swoop up in here. The swoop here, then it kind of comes back over here, and that's growing over the old, the old, uh, the old cut. That I don't know if I can get my cutter in here yet. Oh, sure, I can a little bit. I can get in here a little bit. Hack away at some of that. Sometimes your scissors on this older, deader wood can just work a little bit. So, this little part right here. There we go. Yeah, there's some nice... We just smoothed that out a little bit there. Right there. That was where the flat cut was. So, you can see where that's going to go as we decide what branches we might take away here and might keep. There we have the first little cleanup of the tiger bark. So just right... If I did this to every tree, which I will, going to get all these trees ready for next season, I will go, go in there and cut all this, uh, all these weak and dead and dying branches and make more room for the light to get in there. And now this, this tree just opened up a ton and it's lost a lot of leaves because it's indoors. So here's some yellowing leaves. Um, made that shift indoors, we lost some leaves and that was to be expected. Um, and then we'll get some new growth here as it gets acclimated to the room, which is pretty close. So now I'm gonna see if I can uh, find a pot that I can put this in that's not a uh, training pot. Maybe I have a pot lying around here in my collection that we can uh, see will fit for this tiger bark ficus. I'm here with two potential candidates for the um, tiger bark ficus here. Um, this plant uh, is a round, or this pot rather, is a round pot that it's almost the same size it's coming from. And it's got some uh, kind of a, some teal grayish color here. Um, I like the black with um, when you do get these wet, you see some darker hints in the in the trunk. So it got little, matches the trunk a little bit with some dark textures in the trunk. But I don't know if it's going to fit in there real well. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And then I've got this really nice blue pot that has uh, kind of some uh, um, almost um, not fake crackle, but it does have some texture in the pot. Um, on some of the sides. Uh, and it's a nice blue. It's maybe a little deep, but I think would be a nice pot for this tree because I already have at least a solid inch, inch and a half diameter. This is about a three inch pot, so it could grow in here really nicely and bush out. And, uh, and if I do get this thing to spread out in a couple of uh, growing seasons here, this winter, the next spring, it's gonna be coming outside here and filling it up really nicely. So I think these are the two candidates that I have that will fit this pot. So let's go ahead and see what we have. We've got a couple of aerial roots that are here, so we want to make sure we don't ruin those roots as they go down into the soil. So we'll uh, use the chopstick for right now to get this top layer of soil, and we're going to try to find out where this nabari really is meeting the root line where the roots flare out. We're going to see if we can find that first. Um, this is a tropical tree that we can, of course, uh, bare root 
without too much concern about uh, getting this repotted and being healthy. Um, it's not the summertime, so again, I remind folks that uh, most people like to repot their ficus trees, their tropical trees in Minnesota, usually in July and August. Now, um, is that the best time to do our trees? Well, sure, and it's the best time to do our trees, maybe even the end of June, early July, because we will have all of July, all of August, and most of September for it to really take off in its new environment, its new pot. It's warm, uh, we get humid days in August. These tropical plants are gonna really, really uh, do really, really well. So that said, why am I doing this in the end part of October? It's been in my plant room for about three weeks. We have had the adjustment period. I think most of the leaves that are fallen off are going to fall off, have fallen off, um, and it's kind of used to the environment here. And this is gonna be a really nice environment. Now, granted we opened the show with a concern of the mold in my room, my plant room here for the health of my family. We're gonna make sure that we get that uh, humidity down as quickly as we can to what they recommend is 50% or lower. Now, is 50% gonna be great for the tropical trees? Well, it'd be better if it was higher. If I had it in a greenhouse, it'd be nice. If I have a enclosed case in here, which might be in my future, we could keep the tree nice and humid. We can have all kinds of aerial roots starting to grow on this tree and we'll be happy. But for right now, I can get this repotted. It'll be in my room at 50, 40% humidity, lots of lights on here, a good controlled environment, and it's gonna do just fine. And when you start to collect more trees and have more trees to work with, you just sometimes uh, work on a tree when you have the time to work on the tree. Now, again, that said, best practice, let's try to do our trees when they're healthy. Let's try to do our trees in the right time of the year. But you know, I've talked with uh, several bonsai enthusiasts, some of the um, people that are in my fundamentals group with Peter T, when we've talked about re uh, repotting, it has been mentioned more than once that with a lot of tree species, you can repot almost any time of the year. Okay, not in December, not in January, but if you did some trees, deciduous trees and pine trees in February in our cold frames, you could go ahead and repot that tree in February, keep it in the cold frame, and then it's all still got all that energy in there to shoot out some growth when the season does warm up and you bring it outside. So can you repot in February when you're usually repotting in April or May? Of course you can with some species, and again, if you have that proper aftercare, you're going to be pretty good. And I'm going to emphasize that again. If you have proper aftercare, you're going to be good. Because if you work on a tree in February, not a tropical, mind you, but if you work on a temperate tree, a deciduous, a conifer, if you work on that tree in February and you put it back in your cold frame, you don't want that cold frame to shut down and freeze and all those new roots that you exposed and put in some new soil, they haven't had a chance to even begin to think about growing yet. Well, guess what? they're going to be damaged, okay? So we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. So if we are doing some early repotting, um, we can make sure we have our cold frame that's going to protect our trees really, really well. We are making some nice progress on the root ball here. We're going to give it a soak in the, the water here. See if we can see the structure a little bit better. Now that I've dunked it, washed a little bit of the soil out of there. We still got some, they use a lot of, um, these are from Weigert's Nursery in Florida. Again, my best wishes to Weigert's in a speedy recovery, going back to normal after the hurricane a few weeks back. Um, I did talk to Andrea out there briefly through some text messages and uh, they're definitely getting back on their feet. So that uh, is really good to hear. So Good thoughts going out to the folks at Weigerts who keep providing us some amazing bonsai, pre-bonsai material. I can't wait to go there some year on a road trip and check out Weigerts and be there. I say, I've been told you got to be there to believe it. So looking forward to that. Getting rid of some of these pine bark. They do put a lot of pine bark in, in their uh, soil mix. They have a, kind of a little bit more of a sandy, gritty feel to their soil instead of like a black dirt. It has to have a little bit more grit to it and more sandiness to it. And then they put some pine bark in there. And so you have to be careful making sure you're watering good enough because sometimes they can dry out pretty fast. And then we put them into our soil mixes, of course, as we get them into our possession. Everybody using their own soil mix. People have asked me from time to time what I use. I haven't gotten into the soil, date, so soil debate with too many people, um, but I use Akadama pumice and lava rock. 
I use pretty much a third, a third, and a third for most of my mixtures. Um, if you're new to bonsai and new to the soil debate, um, a lot of people in some of their more refined trees and later development trees might use 100% akadama on some trees. Um, some people are using um, more pumice than lava rock now. Um, lava rock seems to be going uh, a little bit south a little bit with some people. They might be using more pumice and akadama. Akadama is harder to come by, a little more expensive of course, and so I save more mix of the Akadama, a bigger percentage of Akadama for my trees that have a little bit more life to them uh, or experience I should say. They've lived through several seasons and I'm starting to see some more uh, development, refinement if you will, into those trees. So we have some uh, roots here that are definitely too long now that we're going to go ahead and we're just going to chop right off. We'll be cutting those shorter and getting more spread into the pot here in a little bit. Let's give it another wash and see. As I look at both pots, and I put that in there, it looks really good in that pot. Not too bad, the roots can tuck in there. I'll cut a few more roots off. It's kind of a fun little pot. I like that. But I think this one has a little bit more room to grow. I think that'll be a little bit better. And I'm planning on bringing this branch out here. We'll get some growth out here. I think I'm gonna use the blue pot for today. So this root right here, super skinny, right here. It goes right to this right here. And that goes even further around. And it comes back around this way, back around this way, and up to right here. So it goes down right there. So we, We're going to take that part off. There we go. There it curved around. So now that part's shorter. This is also kind of it's right in the middle of the tree. We're always going to make it flatter in the center. And if I don't get to all the roots this time, this time of year, I can come back and get them again next year. A lot of sap flow in there. So this still curves around. It's a little bit of an awkward, big, chunky root that we're just not going to probably utilize in the design of this tree. So there it is. Definitely over pencil thick. And it comes out right here. So if I try to cut it right there, we could get a division of two new roots. From that big one and that could develop into part of our radial root pattern down the way here. So comes right out there now and again we have a some snarly soil in there still and some roots that are a little bit tangled up. There we go. And this big one here we don't need that big one. There's another big root right there. So you can see with the white there, there's the big one that curved and this was another big one right there. So we just flattened this one out real nice. We'll leave the rest of the roots, I think, oh, there for now. And so there's those two roots and now that'll provide a real nice flat bottom to this tree as we comb out some roots and see where these are going to go. I did notice when I was digging into some of these trees, the nice aerial roots got a good subdivision down there. We'll put that in the ground. This, this root that right here is wrapped around the tree right here. It goes a really, really backwards way. We're going to cut that one off. Again, we don't, we don't need that one wrapped around that direction. It's just going to grow and continue to kind of almost like girdle that tree. We don't want to do that. So there, if I didn't take that out, if I didn't take that out, that would have been continually to circle around this tree. 
So it's beginning to look like a flat stump, almost like an elephant's foot at the bottom of this tree, which will provide those some future really nice 360 degree roots because all of these fine roots now, we're beginning to flare them out to the direction we want them in. And they'll continue to grow and thicken up over time. And there's enough fine roots here to get us started on some new thicker roots. So that's really starting to look nice. Another thick one there. We're going to cut off some of these bigger ones that are dangling at the bottom here. So there we go. Yeah, that's going to sit in there real nice. And now we can reposition this aerial root anywhere we want to. We can leave it right like that as a support to the tree. There's one in the back that's still pretty tight against the tree. If I lift it up, it's got some nice spread. It's actually almost growing back into the tree. There we go. I untangled it right there. Now, there we go. Look at it. We have a, like, a mini tree right there. Look at that root system. That's nice. We've got a big one right here we're going to cut off. I'm going to cut off this high one up here. There we go. So this root is going to come straight down the tree now, I think. It'll hide a little bit of this imperfection here, and I can even cut back this uh, scar a little bit more. Can cut that imperfection. I think we'll cut this branch off, and here's a primary branch right here that we might be able to wire out a little bit right here tonight. If we're feeling, if we're feeling lucky, feeling excited about a wire job. And there's that thick trunk, huh? This could also be a front right here with this uh, root. But I think we'd have to twist it too much. We got this kind of coming out at us, whereas here it's hidden more. So let's keep this as our front with the aerial root right here. And we'll plant it at a little bit of an angle this way. Or should we go this way? Let's go this way because this can come back over here. There we go. This way, right here. Here's how we're going to plant it right there. All right. I might need a rock in here to hold this tree in place. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see. Gonna tuck down this root down here below into that soil. There we go. Whenever we can, we're going to tamp down the soil. Get rid of some of those little air pockets in there. I didn't wire down this tree again. I haven't wired down my trees for quite a while. This will be indoors, no high gusty winds. And it's gonna be in really good shape. So there we go. We got a tree that's slanted. Um, we got the nice thick part of the trunk coming down here. So now this flare of the trunk. So by leaning it this way, um, the reason why I wanted to lean it this way um, is a couple of reasons. I like this aerial root coming down more here as support of the tree. We've got an aerial root in the back that uh, we flared out from the trunk, which is nice. But then this goes out this way and it goes into the side of the hill, right? We've got this nice, nice angle this way and it makes the trunk look even wider down there than it actually is. Because when it was straight up, we had a skinnier trunk and now it's going this way and it hits the soil in a really nice way. Um, um, and so let, uh, let me go get a, um, a thing of water. We'll put some water in this. That'll help kind of soak the uh, rocks in together a little bit tighter. And then we'll do a little bit of pruning. And we might even tackle some wiring tonight. I'm going to wash away all those little particles. We have this nice and watered. We have a leaning tower of Pisa ficus tiger bark style, and uh, we're going to see what we can do with a couple of branches. So I want this one to move out here a little bit here, so I'm going to try to get that one out. There's one behind it as well. Um, so if this one breaks, we have this one to, to uh, maybe work with. Now, part of the reason why I'm going to wire today is because um, the tree is not like shooting out a massive amount of growth, although there's been some nice uh, uh, spikes of some branches on some of these since I brought it inside. But I don't have this massive amount of growth where I won't have to worry about taking this wire off like in a week or two. 
Um, if this was wired in the summertime, that'd be tough, right? Because we'd have all this growth and we'd have uh, swelling of the branches and we'd have wire scars. Now, even though this has a, um, again, a textured bark, I don't want to create any more wire scars than I have to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wire this one and I'm going to combine that one with maybe this one right here. So I'm going to come up here, come around here, and so I can move this one out here, and I might be able to move this one just a little bit too. Uh, let, me, let me check that out. Right now they're competing, but they'll be way different in the future. Yeah, let's just give that a try. So we need a thick wire for that. Let's see if this is going to be enough. That one might be enough right there. We will check on this one right here. I don't use a ton of it right now. I haven't wired a lot of trees for a long time. So I'm going to come around the back side of the tree right in here and we'll wrap around this one and then we'll wrap around the trunk once and come around this one. Now, because this is in a really tough spot, I am going to take off this other branch. So I either have success with this one or I do not. Let's see what we can do here. So, we're going to bring this one, that one is going to be for up here. I think I'm going to go this way. We've got the root there, so I've got to go underneath this root right here. And we'll come up this way. branches up in here and then this one will come down here so let's get this one wrapped around so we're always supporting the wire with our one hand and then twisting with the other try not to break all these branches in the meantime and this is aluminum wire so it's a little bit easier to work with I want to just wrap this one around and we're wrapping around to get an anchor you want this to anchor around this part of the trunk before I wrap around this one up here. And I almost didn't leave myself enough, but I think we'll get around just enough on this branch to get a little bit of movement right here. So I wrapped around this trunk right here, came up right here, I only got two full turns. But the one I'm really concerned about is this one. That's the one I want to do a really good job with. So it's going to come around here. We are going to support the bottom of that branch by coming around this way. And again, I'm going to support this branch. And then here we go. This isn't going to be in a show anytime soon. But anytime we're wiring, we're trying to be as neat as possible. We want this to look aesthetically pleasing, um, regardless of if, if we have wire on it or not. So we're going to always try to do our very best to give this uh, a good wire job. So when I get up to the top here, this wire is a little bit thick. Now we've moved this around a little bit. We probably will need a nice little rock over here. This one maybe not be heavy enough, but we can go ahead and place our rock right here. That'll keep it down. Um, but here we go. So we wanted to move these branches off to this side. This could be a potential primary branch. We're gonna go ahead and slowly. So now we added some curve to that branch. Now, will this all be a part of the tree in the future? Probably not. Um, so that'll probably come off at some point. So I'm gonna cut this extra wire off here. And we just have this little extra wire that just comes up here. And that was a big fall of some sort. And there's that bend. It's gonna come up here. I probably want a little bit more of the bend this way. There we go. And so I bought it back this way to bring back this way. And we have this branch could be 
could be wired as well. We could have almost our first little pad right here. This would be a pad of leaves right here. This is gonna grow up, this is gonna grow up. We might get some back budding here. And so I could have some uh, finer wire right there. Let me take a peek at that. Okay, so that could become a real fun primary branch. We can get this thing thickened up. We can let it grow like crazy, cut it back, and let all this thicken up, and then we'll take that wire off. Now, I'm not um, the kind of person who's into a lot of S-shaped trees and want to see all this really crazy movement, but this right now looks to be like a nice fun little bend, and if this branch can develop right here, we could have just a fun little uh, branch coming out here. Now, if that's going to go there, I also want to make sure this comes out a little bit as well. I'm going to bring this one way down low here, and we only have one more bend right in here, and I can kind of do that. So now we have our primary branch here, we have this part of the tree coming up here, we have this over here. What do I do? I got this one out back, might not be sticking around for very long. I've got these two out front that are kind of in our way, so let's look at those next. So this one just comes in our way. So let's just get rid of that one. There we go. This is growing this way. And again, we can let that go for right now until it competes with this too much, which it might already. Um, now, what's a little weird is this branch back here. As you can see, it grows right behind that branch now, and it's really kind of crooked. I wonder if this is starting to bend back a little bit because it's lighter wire. So with this primary branch, this is kind of in the way. We're going to go ahead and cut that off. And we most likely will get some back budding in here. And this back one, I just don't think it's in a good spot. So we're going to cut that off. And right now that's the back of the tree. So I can make this scar a little bit bigger in hopes that it heals over time. And we also don't want to swell here, so I'm going to go ahead and just trim that up a little bit. So here's where I just made that big scar. Can't see it from the front, unless that becomes the front someday. Because, of course, by gosh, when you turn the tea tree around, look what happens to it. Now what I have noticed is we had to start leaning a lot more here and we're losing the, the, the texture of this root here. So what I might have to do is shove some rocks under here. When I lift up to make sure that that stays up. The other thing we can do there too is we can go ahead for right now, we can put a rock right here to make sure that that stays where it's supposed to stay. A little bit of weight on this side, and now we have our tree. So there's the proposed front in the beginning, but this someday could be an okay front as well. All right. There we go. Just made that a little more pronounced. So that root grows a little bit more straight down. So this is a really lovely branch with some great movement. And there's this branch over here that grows back into the tree. Right here. This one grows back into the tree. So we don't want that one. So we're going to cut that off. This one goes up towards the tree. I don't like the direction of that one. So I'm gonna cut that one off because that leaves this branch still alive back here if we even want it. But I think we're gonna take that one off as well.
and whether or not this one, this one has a butt on it, so we'll just hope that that stays alive. It does really well. We'll just leave these two right here where they are, and we just have to decide the fate of these last couple of uh, branches here. I think this one pokes out too much at us. We're going to take that one off. I like this as a potential new leader. It kind of curves around here and comes back up here, but I love the curve here and then up here. So let's just cut that one off. And then this one crosses over, so let's cut that one off. Just gonna cut off a couple of these tips. To push back some more growth. So the only thing I'm contemplating now before we wrap this one up is this right here. So this grows back towards the viewer too much. So I either chop this whole thing off and let these grow here, these grow here and see what turns into a branch. That allows this one to stick around for a little bit longer unless we end up cutting that one off. Um, I think if I cut that one off, I have too flat of a front, but it is kind of right in our way, isn't it? Let's just do it. Did anybody gasp when I did that? <laughs> I think regardless, that was a decent decision to make because we'll focus on this branch now, this branch, and this branch. We've got some nice movement in here. There's a little bit of a swell right here. So as this thickens up, that might make this swell look less worse. And then this one already has got thickness. So we're just gonna leave that go for right now and see where it grows. I think if we just cut this off, We'll get rid of that competing leaf for right now, and we'll see where this back buds for our next prune. And I'm pretty suspicious of this one right here. This one is thick. We've got thick to thinner to thinnest, thinnest of all, but this one, these three are all the same size right here. And this one's a little bit bigger, and that one's the biggest. That's the primary branch right now, though. We'll leave it. Because again, maybe next year we change this. Look at this. You're looking at the front right now that I assumed would be the front. Could that be the front as well? It certainly could be, and you see another aerial root right there. So this, this branch does look a little awkward right now, but let me see how things grow before we make that huge uh, decision right there. I think we're gonna leave it right there. We've got a little bit of this nice angled tree with it going back this way. It used to be an umbrella tree straight up. I'm really happy with the first iteration here. The thing I'm going to be careful about is if this wire starts to cut in a little bit and then we'll make sure we get that uh, so it doesn't cut in. Uh, we're just going to leave these alone and let them push out a little bit, see if I get any back buddy now underneath some grow lights and we will see what happens. So let's give it one more final spin here. It's watered. It's ready to go back on the shelf. There is the first proposed front. You see how skinny it is here, so we'll need some more growth out here. And there's the back, or possibly a front someday, the other side, and the current proposed front. We've got the aerial root popped out here with the rock here. This is going to keep things nice and uh, firm where it needs to be, and then we'll uh, be in good shape hopefully down the road. That's awesome. I think it's a fun little tree. Um, again, you look at these trees when they're all just kind of, uh, um, kind of a broom shape, you know, um, lollipop broom shape, the hedge cut, and you just angle it a little bit in the pot and pull out a couple of branches and you're on your way. That was only one wiring for this tree and look at the rest of it. If we get a whole bunch of back on here now, this could be a real fun tree in a couple of years for sure. It already has a ton of character. So let's wrap it up right there. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we're gonna see you really soon with more updates on the massive undertaking to make this less moldy and of course, a whole lot more trees to work on. All right, we'll catch you soon.